Aho, Anachi he ni kara giwin. He ha chewing got just ke wang shik in giji, eki ho kara gik jinet. Mother said she had me at our grandfather's home at East Fork River. We lived there in the spring, April, at the time they were making maple sugar. She said that after a while, the weather became pleasant. Everything was nice and green, and we moved from this place back to where we usually lived, at Levis Creek near Black River Falls. My parents took up a homestead. My father did not care to obtain any land because he was a member of the Thunder Clan. I do not belong to the earth, he said. I do not belong to the earth and I have no concern with land. But mother was one of the bird clan people. She belonged to the eagle clan. She said, by this means we will have some place to live. And so she took 40 acres. Here my father built the log house where we usually lived. When I was a little girl, our family was large. I was the youngest and I had three older brothers and two older sisters. I was the last child, poor quality, they used to say of that one. After my first birthday, mother, oldest sister White Thunder and I went to town. We were returning and mother carried me on her back. I was restless and she had taken me off the cradle board. I remember being there on mother's back. We crossed a creek and I saw the water swirling swiftly. Mother said, ahead is your older sister. A woman was walking in front of us carrying an empty cradle board. Once I asked mother if that ever happened. I told her what I had seen. Oh, mother said, I remember that was your oldest sister, White Thunder, who carried your empty cradle board on her back. Do you remember that? One time I was very sick. There was an old lady whose name was Wolf Woman, and mother let the old lady hold me. I want my little girl to live, mother said. I give her to you. Whatever way you can make her live, she will be yours. That old lady wept. You have made me think of myself. Let it be thus. My life, let her use it. The name that I am going to give her is a holy name. She will reach an old age. There they named me with a wolf clan name. He ha chiwinga, they called me. It means to make a home in a bluff or a mountain, as the wolf does. But in English, I just say my name is Mountain Wolf Woman. In the spring, when my father went trapping on the Mississippi and the weather became very pleasant, my sister once said, it is here that they dig yellow water lily roots. So we all went out, my mother and sisters and everybody. They took off their shoes, put on old dresses and went wading into the water. They used their feet to hunt for the roots. They dug them out with their feet and then the roots floated up to the surface. My sister took one of the floating roots, wrapped it about with the edge of her blouse and tucked it into her belt. I thought she did this because it was the usual thing to do. I saw her doing this and when I happened upon a root, I took it and did the same thing. I put it in my belt too and then everybody laughed at me. Oh, little seagull's doing something. She has a water lily root in her belt. Everybody laughed at me. My sister had done that because she was pregnant. Because I saw her do that, I did the same thing, and so they teased me. Upon returning home, mother and father planted a garden. Then the blueberries ripened, and we picked blueberries. There were pine trees all around where we lived. The kind of pine trees that are very tall and look as if they had been trimmed all up the trunk, almost to the top. That is the way it used to be around our home. The pine trees were very dense and there was no underbrush. Under the trees, the blueberries grew in profusion. When various foods were ripe, the people dried them. They harvested a lot of corn and carried it home on their backs. Squash was also dried. The women pared the squash, cut it in two, and sliced it to form rings. They cut down forked trees, peeled them, and strung the squash on poles. They laid across the forks. A lot of squash hung on this framework. 
The Indians generally dried squash in this way and saved it for winter. They used to dry blueberries too, berries they did not sell. They dried the blueberries and cooked them in the winter time. The blueberries were boiled with dried corn and I used to think this was delicious. That is what we used to eat. When I was small, the Winnebago generally went to pick cranberries after they were through taking care of their gardens. We used to do that too. When we arrived at the marsh, there were many Indians who camped together there and picked cranberries. The men used rakes and the women picked by hand. As the women were picking and they reached the edge of the ditch, they all sat on the edge of the ditch in a long row, side by side. They picked ahead of themselves in a straight line. We children used to pick too. We used small pails. Wherever mother sat, I used to sit next to her and I would pick cranberries. When I filled a pail, I emptied it into mother's bushel box. My sister did the same thing on the other side of mother. That is what I used to do. That cranberry picking place is gone now because at one time a big forest fire came through there. The entire stand of cranberry bushes was burned up. Father used to give big feasts, 10 fireplaces, they said. Many Indians attended and father used to feed a wigwam full of people. There we would dance all night. Sometimes children were named at feasts. I went to the Lutheran Mission School at Wittenberg. I had attended school at Toma, and finally I went to school again. I was a teenage girl and I went to school there every year. Once my older brother sent me a bicycle. Oh, I was so proud. Nobody had a bicycle. I was the first one to have a bicycle, a girl's bicycle. My brothers did that for me. The girls really thought something of me. They coaxed me to ride my bicycle and they pampered me. Bicycles were rare at that time. I suppose I was the first of the students to have a bicycle. Whenever the Indians were going to have a dance, Nancy Smith and I would ride there on our bicycles. We sat and watched the people dance. We sat on a big log watching them dance. Nancy told me to go ahead and dance, and so I did. I really danced. When they used to ask me to dance, I would do so. They said that they really liked it for me. They used to tell me that they liked it when I enjoyed myself dancing. Whenever something of that sort was taking place, I was never embarrassed, no matter the circumstances. I always used to be there. Then I stopped attending school. Alas, I was enjoying school so much and they made me stop. They took me back home. It was then that they told me I was going to be married. I cried, but it did no good. What would my crying avail me? They had already arranged it. At the time that my mother was combing my hair and I was weeping at the prospect of becoming a daughter-in-law, she told me, Daughter, I prize you highly. You alone are the youngest child. I prize you highly, but nothing can be done about this matter. It is your brother's doing. You must do whatever your brothers say. When you are older and know better, you can marry whomever you yourself think that you want to marry. Mother said that to me, and I did not forget it. 
They dressed me. I wore a ribbon embroidery skirt, and I wore one as a shawl. I wore a heavily beaded binding for the braid of hair down my back, and I had on earrings. It looked as if I were going to a dance. That man was sitting nearby. He started out leading the pony, and I followed after. That is how I became a daughter-in-law. As a daughter-in-law, I arrived. When I arrived, he had me go into the wigwam, and I went in and sat down. They told me to sit on the bed, and I sat there. I took off all the clothing that I was wearing when I got there. I lay down a shawl and whatever I had, all the finery I put on it, beads, the necklaces, clothing, even the blouse that I was wearing. Finally, the man's mother came in. The woman took the things and left. There were women sitting all about outside. They were his female relatives. They divided the things among themselves. As they distributed the things around, everybody contributed something in return. Two or three days from the time of my arrival, they took me back with four horses and a double shawl so full of things they could barely tie the corners together. That is how they used to arrange things for young women in the past. I had two children, and then I left this man. He was a jealous kind of man. I finally left him. Then there was another man. He was persistent in courting me. We will go to the courthouse and take out a marriage license, he said. So that is what we did. At the time they built the dam at Hatfield, Wisconsin, we went there to live. My husband worked there taking care of the horses. They used many horses. He used to wake up very early in the morning and be the first one on the job. He fed and harnessed the horses. Later, we lived here and there in Wisconsin, in Nebraska, and in South Dakota, and then we came back to Black River Falls. Altogether, I had 11 children. Three of them died, two boys and one girl. It was April 24th, 1936, that my husband died. In the evenings, I used to think as I sat there, maybe this is not happening to me. Maybe this is not happening to me. Maybe he did not die. Children of mine died. My relatives died. Father and mother. My older sister died. But it was never as hard as when my man died. Maybe I am having a bad dream, I thought. I would pinch my arms to see if I were awake. My children are now all grown up. I have 38 grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. My children live here and there, and I can visit them. I like it that way. At first, I used to be lonesome, but I got over it. They are doing well, and I'm getting along well. My children always want to take me home with them. Wait a while, I say, until I am older. You can take care of me when I can no longer take care of myself. I always say I am happy the way I am, 
and that I hope to continue in that fashion. I like to live by myself. I go visiting here and there. Sometimes I go to Nebraska and see my relatives. I am old, but though I am 73 years old, my body is strong. I make my own clothing. I am able to move about. Where I live, I care for myself. And here I am telling how I live my life. Yeah, <laughs> 